Uh, hello, all our viewers. Uh, I'm by the names Ahewa Samuel, and I'm an author, a consultant, and uh, a motivational speaker, and also entrepreneur, and at the same time, leader or politician. Uh, I introduce a psychoanalytic intervention to the problem of poverty in Uganda. And uh, this program mainly focuses on uh, mindset change and empowering the poor. I will, uh, I'm a politician, uh, I'm a former mayor aspirant, uh, Kasese municipality, and uh, I have been uh, motivated to address the problem of poverty because of the need to empower the local economy. Without solving the problem of poverty, uh, the development of the people is at stake. And my inspiration comes from the fact that we need to enter into the mind of people and get the parts together and understand what leads to uh, disempowerment, especially addressing problems of hunger, disease, illiteracy, instability, a poor conflict resolution, and also seeking to, to see the way forward for empowering Africa. Let me quote uh, one of the uh, leaders in Africa, Emperor Hales Rassi, who said, in, our, in the real sense, Africa has not yet been made. And it still awaits its creators, and these creators need to awaken the stumbling or the slumbering giant of Africa. And this psychoanalytic intervention seeks to empower different people. Number one, institutions. Number two, the youth. Number three, the women. Number four, men especially the old ages. Now, in this intervention, I have written nine books, no, nine editions, addressing the problem of empowerment and the challenges that come with empowering the poor. We understand poverty has, has a vicious cycle which contributes to all the, the different problems that Africa is facing today, especially when it comes to conflict resolution, uh, solving the problem of hunger, and also managing the environment, and also making sure that we increase human capital development. Hati chigambo chino capital, chiva mo mo chigambo cha Latin, chiva ita capita. Capita chitegeza obuongo, that is the mind. So the first and foremost issue that we need to enter into understanding the character of human beings is the mind. That is the first and foremost capital that we need to first understand why the problems human beings are facing are either not changing or they are static and they are not being solved rightly or we are not focusing actually on the real vision which needs to be used in addressing these problems of hunger, illiteracy, backwardness, and low cap human capital development. Cut to the psychoanalytic uh, program, you know, uh, focusing on uh, the different facets or the five etiological factors. My psychology, to, to, to say five, there are five etiological factors which lead to poverty. The psych, that is the mind of Wongo, the, the white I, I've told you, capital. The, the second is the, 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 the physiological or by the, the health of a human being. Then the third one is the physical poverty, whereby people lack resources or people lack uh, the physical skills that can lead them to manipulate all these ideas they have and become productive. Then the fourth one is the theological. We understand also the religious perspectives are also very important. Obama, the dean is a tuvamu. 
in most cases, people have different uh, religious uh, beliefs, which can even lead them to be unproductive or not understand themselves. As, as you have always heard about Bagamba, already that is already a religious perspective, which is reducing the person's understanding of himself and God himself and even nature. So there, there is a theological uh, poverty, which also needs to be addressed. And I address it in this, uh, in this program also. Then there is the social relations. Uh, we understand where we of Zimbabwe Tulina because Uganda is a, a, is a multicultural society or diverse society. Tulina over 64 tribes, a Zafi Wano, like Uganda alone. Then uh, when we come in, we bring in the whites, then we bring in the Indians, and all this, they go to over 100. Kati, uh, your factor, your social relations, if there is a problem of tribalism or racial segregation, uh, which we call xenophobia, as we have seen it in the history of Africa, we have seen the genocide in Rwanda, we have seen uh, uh, the 2008 violence in Kenya, uh, which led to tribal wars. We have it here in Uganda, in my, my home area my, uh, uh, alone. So we have that if the people don't understand the value of unity or manipulating social relations so that they can partner up or synergize and come up with solutions to their problems, then also that one also can cause backwardness and poverty because we need to learn from the best. So, Kati, this psychoanalytic program brings out the knowledge, that, the detailed knowledge on how these different sectors can be used to get the ideas and the way forward to solve the problem of a low human capital development. Because the biggest problem is how do we empower? How do we empower the youth? Too many Uganda uh, youth, uh, they, they, they uh, occupy three quarters of the population. Now, that one itself is already a sign that we need to empower these youth. Now we know the youth are unemployed, they are in school, they are, they are idle on, on, on that perspective. So we also need to see that the highest population of the country is guided very well, is, is, is built in the right values, the norms, which can lead us to understand their problem. Because if we cannot understand the biggest population problem of, of, of Uganda, then this, the, it is going to trickle down and increase the burden. Now, my definition of poverty, I, I, I often use the, the, the statistics of dependence. Once we reduce dependence, we are going to solve the problem of poverty. Definitely, the World Bank uses uh, the measurable perspective definition of poverty from the living below $2. And we understand that the youth don't have that money. And another question is, do they have the resources? Do they, have they been allowed to access uh, the right education, are they getting the right education? All of that are in the factors of reducing dependence and increasing self-sustainability. Now, two-thirds of the population of Uganda are women. Where are our women? When we talk about social relations, when we talk about social relations, we have to see that the social relations, that is gender inequality, also that gap is solved. Then another biggest problem when we come to social relations is inequality. So if there is gender inequality, the two-thirds of the women who are already in the economy, if they are discriminated against and if they are left behind, the burden now trickles down. It goes to the one or a quarter of the population, which are men and the old, old people. Now, how are men going to handle this burden, the burden problem? The, the solution is to understand how to manipulate our social relations. Women are the highest employed women uh, population in, uh, in, in, in agriculture or in the informal sector. 
because agriculture is the biggest sector in Uganda. So where are they when it comes to knowledge? We need, right now we are in a knowledge-driven economy. And the psychoanalytic intervention, which I, I, I propose to the society, is a collective, it's a collective uh, idea which needs to bring all the people in, a, in, in a psych to understand what is the problem and what is the way forward. In the 1960s, 1960s when uh, uh, America was still uh, struggling economically, they increased, the strategy was, to, they increased the workforce of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the economy and they put women to work. The women were not left home to wait for uh, Sente Zaka, Zaka Meza. 1965, when women entered the workforce, the productivity, the general productivity of America increased and it, it caught up with German, it caught up with, the, with the Japan, and that is how the American economy now is up. Because now women work. They do the same things men do. What is that problem? We are solving inequality. Social relations, how do we manipulate our social relations? How can we strategically formulate partnership between the women and the men and then the youth to make sure that we reduce the, inc the income inequality, the gender inequality, and also we reduce the discrimination against the youth? In 1960, there is a, a, a gentleman called Robert Bat Butler who, suggest, who, who said there is a problem of ageism. Ageism is the socioeconomic discrimination of people according to age. So if we say that the youth are not supposed to be employed until they have 10 years working experience, or we shall employ the youth until they finish university after 25, there is a problem here. It means the youth are idle in all this, all this time. And the more the mind is not utilized, the mind does not grow. So how can we change the pattern in which we are discriminating against the youth socioeconomically? Can we say we are not going to wait for the youth until they stop, they, 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 they finish university or the higher, higher, higher uh, education levels? So all these are the psychoanalytic understanding of the problem of empowerment because if the youth are left redundant, they are left idle, those are idle resources which are still taking us back. And it is very important that in this knowledge of empowerment, that then we now address now the way forward. What are the recommendations to ourselves? Because poverty is a collective problem. It is not a problem of government. You see, the, people, the reason why government will always fail or might always fail to solve the problems of hunger and poverty and economic um, uh, inequality or this kind of gender disparities. The reason why, it is because that institution becomes the people they hire. So if the people are coming from the society in which they are not empowered, they are not motivated, they are discriminated against, when they go in government, definitely you will still see the divide. And that is why you will understand that there is a sectoral imbalance, you will find there is regional imbalances, and all of these things, they cause political instability, political con um, conflicts, and then you find that we are in the havoc. And that is the only way we can now solve the problem of government. How? By empowering the people. How can they be guided in the right knowledge? And we understand, because uh, there is a proverb in uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 23, verse 7, which says, as a man thinks, so is he. And the way people think is the way institutions think. Where whatever men think in, a, in any society, it is the way the institutions will think, will behave. It's the way institutions will, will work out. And that is the, why, the reason why uh, I bring about the psychoanalytic intervention so that we can first empower the society. How can we make the poor productive? The most important thing is not just talking about, oh, government should help on 
government should help on this, government should help on this. The government is a reflection of the people, the kind of, or the quality of people or the human capital which is already in the society. So the psychoanalytic intervention seeks to actually motivate people because innovation is very important. We are in a knowledge-driven economy now. In a knowledge-driven economy, it means we need, we need knowledge workers, we need knowledge seekers, we also need institutions, uh, institutions that learn, or we call them learning organizations. And how do learning organizations come? They, only, they can only come if the people have a learning culture, have a reading culture, have a research culture. I have spent uh, tw uh, 12 years doing research, and that is how I came to discover that the problem of poverty is not going to be an issue of politicians showing us manifestos or reading us manifestos, and then we think that maybe something will come. It will not change unless first the people change. And this psychoanalytic intervention seeks to, to establish the strength, weaknesses, threats, and opportunities, number one, of women, of the youth, and then of the old age, and then of, uh, of, of the different players in, 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 in increasing human capital development. So the solution is with the people. But if the people don't give themselves that time, that, that investment in themselves, then even the aid that is being given to them, even when we have the resources, we have the land, we have the food, we have the, um, the grants we have around because we know we have the rich, the rich continent, we have the oil, we have that. All these charities are not going to work if the people themselves don't give themselves time. Uh, there is a gentleman, uh, Dr. Washington Carver, an American scientist, who invented five, 300 ways, 300 products from peanuts. Peanuts, if you, peanuts, uh, if you know, there, is this, there is an old saying that people, people always believe that a small salary is peanuts. But when Dr. Washington Carver went in his laboratory, he established 300 ways, 300 products from peanuts. Since then, he changed the economic status of, of uh, the uh, working, uh, this, 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 uh, the farmers in America, and it changed the whole course of the, of the farmers. They became rich because now they found value of just a peanut. If Washington cover had to first wait for government to invest in him. That would not be discovered. So this is the way forward for the psychoanalytic intervention program. Because now I have discovered the youth have their own way in which we can manipulate their ideas, their ideology, their skill, and empower them and make them productive. The same way with women. You are not going to, we are not going to empower the youth in the same way we empower women. Those are two classes or genres of people. And these people have to understand their physiological, their physiological strength, their weaknesses, their strength. Most importantly, their mind. Do they know how their mind works or do they know how to manipulate them, their own natures and become rich. Then there is the old ages. The old ages, also as old people, we understand that they need their own set of empowerment. They need their own knowledge, which can help them understand their strengths, weaknesses, uh, and threats. And this is the use of this psychoanalytic intervention. Now, in my next address to you, fellow viewers, I will be now bringing to you all the content in the nine books in the psychoanalytic program. Thank you very much. You can contact me anytime, and we shall always be interacting together about the psychoanalytic inter intervention uh, to the problem of poverty in Uganda and make sure that we make Uganda a better place or we make Africa a better place. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity to, to follow me here. Thank you.